Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs by the Brothers Grimm One winter, a beautiful queen sat sewing by a window. As she gazed down at the snow-covered garden, she saw a black raven, and at that same moment she happened to prick her finger on her needle. A drop of blood fell on the snow. The colours were so strong that the queen said to herself, If only I could have a child whose skin was as white as snow, with hair as black as a raven, and lips as red as blood. Not long afterwards, the queen had a baby daughter, and when she saw her jet black hair, snow white skin, and red lips, she remembered her strange wish on that winter's day, and named her daughter Snow White. But after a few years, Snow White's mother died, and her father married again. The new queen, Snow White's stepmother, was beautiful too, but she was also proud and vain. She had a magic mirror, and each day she would admire herself in it, and ask, Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? And the mirror would always reply, You, O Queen, are the fairest one of all. The Queen would smile when she heard this, for she knew the mirror always spoke the truth. As the years went by, Snow White grew prettier and prettier, until one day, when the Queen looked in the magic mirror, the mirror replied, You, O Queen, are fair, tis true, but Snow White is fairer now than you. The Queen was filled with envy. From that day on, she hated Snow White. Finally, she called for a hunter and told him to take Snow White deep into the forest and kill her. Cut out her heart and bring it back to me to prove she is dead, she commanded. The hunter felt very sad. Like everyone in the king's household, he loved Snow White, but he knew he must obey the queen's orders. He took Snow White deep into the forest and pulled out his knife. Snow White fell to her knees in terror. The hunter took pity on her and told her to hide. Then he killed a deer and cut out its heart to take back to the cruel queen. On her own in the forest, Snow White felt afraid. She began to run here and there through the trees, but she did not know which way to go. In the evening, she came to a clearing and found a little house. She wondered if it was a woodman's cottage where she might be able to stay. When she knocked at the door, there was no answer. Snow White lifted the latch and went inside. There she saw a room all neat and tidy with a little table laid with seven places, seven little knives and forks, seven little wooden plates and drinking cups. Snow White was hungry and thirsty, so she ate some food from each plate and drank a drop from each cup. She did not want to empty one person's plate and cup alone. Beyond the table were seven little beds, all neatly made. Snow White tried them all out and the seventh bed was just right. She lay down and fell into a deep sleep, exhausted by her long journey through the forest. The cottage was the home of seven dwarfs. All day long they worked in a mine nearby, digging diamonds from deep inside the mountain. When they returned home that night, they were startled to see that someone had entered their cottage and had taken some food and drank from each place at the table. They were even more surprised to find their beds disturbed. When the seventh dwarf found Snow White in his bed, he called to the others. They all gathered around her and marvelled at her beauty. Being kind little men, they decided not to disturb her. When Snow White awoke the next day, she told the dwarfs her story. I have no home now, she said sadly, and at once the dwarfs asked her to stay with them in the cottage. 
Snow White agreed happily, and each morning, when the dwarfs went off to work, she stayed behind and kept their cottage clean and cooked their supper. At the palace, the queen welcomed the hunter when he returned with the deer's heart. She was certain that once again she was the most beautiful woman in the world. As soon as she was alone, she looked in her magic mirror and said, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? To her horror, the mirror replied, You, O queen, are fair, tis true, but Snow White is fairer still than you. The queen trembled with rage as she realised that the hunter had tricked her. She decided that she would seek out Snow White and kill her herself. The queen disguised herself as an old woman with a tray of ribbons and pretty things to sell and she set off into the forest. When she came to the dwarf's cottage she knocked and cried out, Pretty goods for sale, pretty goods for sale. Snow White came to the door and looked at the tray. The queen noticed that she was attracted by some lacy ribbons and asked if Snow White would like to try one on. Snow White nodded, so the queen threaded the ribbon through her bodice. Then she tugged the lacing so tight that Snow White could not breathe and fell to the ground. The queen hurried back to the palace, sure that this time Snow White was truly dead. When the dwarfs returned that evening, they found Snow White lying on the floor. Deathly cold and still, they gathered around her in dismay. Then they noticed that she had a new lacing on her dress, which had been tied too tightly. Quickly they cut it open and Snow White started breathing again. All seven dwarfs gave a tremendous sigh of relief, as by now they loved Snow White dearly. She told them what had happened. The dwarfs suspected that the old peddler woman was Snow White's wicked stepmother and that she would try to harm Snow White again if she ever found out that she was still alive. They begged her not to allow anyone into the cottage while she was alone and told her not to buy anything from strangers. At the palace, the queen smiled at her reflection in the magic mirror and asked, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? And the mirror replied, You, O queen, are fair, tis true, but Snow White is fairer still than you. The queen was speechless with rage. She realised that yet again her plan to kill Snow White had failed. She resolved to try again and this time she was determined to succeed. She chose an apple with one rosy red side and one yellow side. Carefully she injected poison into the red part of the apple and carefully she placed it in a basket of apples at the very top. The wicked queen, disguised this time as a peasant woman, set out once more into the forest. Once more she knocked at the dwarf's cottage. She knew that Snow White would be wary by now so she simply chatted to her and as Snow White became less nervous she offered her an apple as a present. Snow White was tempted as the rosy apple looked delicious but she refused explaining that she had been told not to accept anything from strangers. I will show you how harmless it is said the disguised queen. I will take a bite First, and if I am unharmed, you will know that it is safe. The queen had not poisoned the yellow side of the apple, so she took a bite from there. When nothing happened, Snow White stretched out her hand for the apple. She took a bite, but from the rosy red side. Instantly, the poison attacked Snow White, and she fell down as though dead. The triumphant queen cackled with glee ha, 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 as she returned to the palace. When the dwarfs found Snow White that evening, they could not revive her. All night they watched over her, but when morning came and she still did not move or speak, they decided she must be dead. Weeping bitterly, the dwarfs laid her in a coffin and placed a glass lid over the top so that all could admire her beauty, even though she was dead. 
Then they carried the coffin to the top of the hill, where night and day they stood guard over their beautiful Snow White. The wicked queen was delighted that day when she looked in her mirror and asked, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? And the mirror replied, You, O queen, are the fairest one of all. She gave a cruel laugh when she heard those words. They meant that her plan to kill Snow White had at last succeeded. As the years passed, the story of Snow White's beauty spread far and wide. One day, a prince came to see the coffin for himself. Snow White looked so lovely that he fell in love with her at once and asked the dwarfs to allow him to take the coffin with him back to his own country. The dwarfs loved Snow White too much to permit him to do this, but they agreed to let him kiss her. As the prince gently raised Snow White's head to kiss her, the piece of poison apple fell from her lips and she stirred a little. She was alive! Where, where am I? she asked, looking at the prince. Safe with me, replied the prince, and Snow White too fell in love. At that moment, the wicked queen was looking in her mirror, and the mirror said, You, O oh queen, are fair, tis true, but Snow White is fairer now than you. The queen cursed Snow White in fury, but by now the king had discovered what evil deeds the queen had planned, and he banished her from his kingdom. That night she left the palace, and no one ever saw her or her mirror again. Snow White said farewell to her kind friends, the seven dwarfs, and rode away with her prince. They were married at his father's castle, and lived for a long time afterwards, in happiness and peace. Join us again next time on Be Unique Stories for the Elves and the Shoemaker.